Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, friends and neighbors, and all peoples, welcome to episode two of the Garden of Ruin. In this piece, we'll explore what makes people jealous. And have you ever met a jealous person before? Have you ever had a relationship, romantic, platonic, or otherwise, with someone who was so uncomfortable with you being around other people, or they always had to know why you would talk to someone else, or they had to know why they weren't a priority in so many situations that may or may not have involved them. And when we think about that, we wonder what made somebody feel that way when other people don't. Maybe absolutely fine with their romantic partner going out with, you know, members of the, the dating group that they belong to or... You know, when friends have other friends outside of certain friendships or different friendship circles, that what brings somebody to feel that, that jealousy toward or rivalry towards something that, you know, honestly, in many situations shouldn't cause that, or at least in healthy relationships shouldn't cause that. So with what we've been discussing thus far in this series, we're looking at neural pathway formation and or trying to explore the experiences or the stimulus that develops unhealthy habits in our brain and plants these bad seeds inside of people that makes them act inappropriately as they grow. Jealousy, from what I've read, is often caused by insecurity or a fear of being replaced or a paranoia that it could be the insecurity where someone feels that they're not good enough or that they'll never be good enough and they just have a low self-esteem or a paranoia is that they fear that something may be sabotaging them or someone may be moving in a way that will disrupt what they are trying to do. And so just like in the last episode, we kind of talked about a situation where there's kind of a healthy family with um, celebrating positive reinforcement and doing things like that. And there was an unhealthy family where, you know, we reviewed how that could lead to a trauma for a child in the family or members of the family. But in this episode, I think we have a very good example of what can make someone jealous and it, it wouldn't fall necessarily on what their home life is like or anything. It's actually something that I think many cultures and society in general is very guilty of. And so a lot of times, you know, many, many homes are multiple, multiple members in a family, right? We have a couple parents or one parent and we have several children or siblings or however the dynamic is set up. And in many situations or, you know, something we very commonly see is that there is a, a home where one child is academically gifted, that this one kiddo is just brilliant, great with math, great with science, great with arts and literature, and just all around a very, very good student. And we have other kids in the family that are very good, but let's say another child in that same household is trying very hard at school and does okay, you know, they, they can pass their classes all right and everything, but they're much more a kinesthetic learner. They are not a lecture learner. They are not a, a visual learner. They're not an auditory learner. They're a kinesthetic learner. So they're someone who becomes very quickly proficient with skills that involve using their hands. And they are the kid that figured out how to fix the lawnmower at age eight. They figured out how to fix the car at age 12. And the, the kiddo will have a very, very bright future in trade-based professions, right? You know, being a welder, being a plumber, being an engineer or not engineer, um, electrician or being a boiler maker or something like that. We all know that's, that's an incredible living to make. It's very good work and it is very solid and steady. But because of the way that our society is set up or uh, many, many cultures across the world, it's one that constantly rewards academia. And so even though the one child that's very mechanically oriented or kinesthetically oriented, it does a great job in what they, they do or what they take interest in, 
there is the other child who is so academically inclined that this there feels then a rivalry that forms between them or a discomfort that forms between both of those children. And in particular, the child that isn't as academically inclined may form these feelings of jealousy. And it's not that they're bad or it's not that they aren't smart and it's not that they are not supported by their family. It's just that they don't learn in the way that is as celebrated in lots of our cultures or lots of our society. And so this child may end up becoming a very jealous person and they may feel that they are never good enough and they may feel very insecure. And it's because of repeated stimulus that makes them feel that way, even unbeknownst to all of us, that, you know, the people in that kiddo's life are trying to celebrate the kid and are trying to encourage the kid and trying to tell them they're doing a great job. But they'll see more opportunities or more mainstream or socially celebrated opportunities open up for the academically inclined child where the other child doesn't get as many things opened up for them. And because of that, it may, may lead to a lot of jealousy and a lot of bad behavior. So we think of this neural pathway formation that during those formative years, the child is consistently, though they are not stupid, feeling like they're stupid or feeling like they're not good or feeling like they're not smart. And it ends up leading them to a place where they, they'll feel that way forever. That then, if certain things come up that remind them of those experiences, they may immediately start to feel jealous. That if they are in a relationship, platonic or romantic or otherwise, with somebody, if their partner in that relationship goes and spends time with somebody that the, the jealous child perceives as smarter than them, they may become jealous and start to have these bizarre jealousy behaviors, these weird questions they want to ask the, the partner or the friend, the strange behaviors that, that come out of a jealous person. And so none of that is okay, right? It's not okay for someone to be jealous regardless of what they've been through. And it's on them to make it better. But when we see those behaviors, we think about things that may have happened that may have made that person such a jealous individual. So if we look at our drawing, we see the character on the left is just desperately reaching out as they want to be needed so badly. But because they can never feel that way, they then become this creature on the right, the crooked jaw and side-eyeing everything around them because they can't get past their jealousy. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the next episode.